Hi everybody and welcome back to a new week of online learning. So you've got me for your story time this week and this week I have decided to start a new book with you. Okay, now the book that I'm going to be reading with you is going to take us a little while because it is a chapter book and it's called The Enchanted Wood by Enid Blyton and to be specific it is a thick chapter book and there are 33 chapters so what I'm going to do this week I'm going to read a chapter a day and then we will hopefully be able to finish this book before we finish for summer I hope you all enjoy this story and I'll see you all again soon goodbye Chapter one, how they found the magic wood. There were once three children called Joe, Beth and Franny. All their lives they had lived in a town, but now their father had a job in a country, so they were all to move as soon as they possibly could. What fun to be in the country, said Joe. I shall learn all about animals and birds. And I shall pick as many flowers as I want to, said Beth. <clears throat> And I shall have a garden all of my own, said Franny. When the day came for the move, all the children were excited. A small van came to their door and two men helped their father and mother to pile everything into it. When it was full, the van drove away and the children put their coats and hats to go, put on their coats and hats to go with their mother to catch the train to the station. Now we're off, cried Jo. The country, the country! sang Beth. We might see fairies there, said Franny. The train whistled and chuffed out of the station and the children pressed their noses to the window and watched the dirty houses in the chimneys race by. How they hated the town. How lovely it would be to be in the clean country with flowers growing everywhere and birds singing in the hedges. We might have, ad have adventures in the country, said Joe. There will be streams and hillsides, big fields and dark woods. Oh, it will be lovely. You won't have any more adventures in the country than you will in the town, said their father. Dare say you will find it very dull. But there's where you're qu he was quite wrong. My goodness, the things that happened to those three children. They arrived at last at the tiny station where they were to get out. A sleepy-looking porter put their two bags on a trolley and said he would bring them along later. Off they all went down the winding country lane, chattering loudly. I wonder if we've got a garden, said Franny. But before they reached their new home, they were tired out and could not bother to say a word more to each other. Their cottage was five miles from the station and as the children's father could not afford to do anything but could not afford to do anything but walk there it seemed a very long way indeed there was no bus to take them so the tired children dragged their feet along wishing for a glass of warm milk and a cozy bed at last they got there and dear me it was worth the walk for the cottage was sweet roses hung from the walls red and white and pink and honeysuckle was round the front door it was lovely the van at the door, the van was at the door, and the two children, two men were moving all of the furniture into the little house. Father helped, whilst mother went in the light, in, went to light the kitchen stove to make them all a hot drink. They were so tired they could do nothing but drink hot milk, eat some toast, and tumble into their roughly made beds. Joe looked out of the window, but he was too sleepy to see properly. In one minute, the two girls in their small room were asleep, and Joe, too, in his even tinier room. What fun it was to wake up in the morning and see the sun shining in at the strange windows. It didn't take Joe, Beth and Franny very long to dress. Then they were out in their little garden, running through the grass that had grown so long and smelling the roses that grew all around. Mother had cooked eggs for them, and they ate their breakfast hungrily. It's lovely to be in the country, said Jo, looking out of the window to the faraway hills. We can grow vegetables in the garden, said Beth. There will be glorious walks all around, said Franny. 
That day, everyone helped to get the little house straight and tidy. Father was going to work the next day. Mother hoped there would be someone to give her washing to do. Then she would make enough money to buy a few hens. That would be lovely. I shall collect the eggs each morning and evening, said Franny happily. Let's go out and see what the country round about is like, and said Joe. Can you spare us for an hour, Mother? Yes, run along, said Mother. So off the three children went out of the tiny white front gate and into the lane. They explored all round about. They ran across a field where pink clover was full of bees. They paddled, paddled in a small brown stream that chattered away to itself under the willow trees in the sunshine. And then they suddenly came to the wood. It was not far from their cottage. At the back, it looked quite an ordinary wood, except the trees were darker, green, were a darker green than usual. A narrow ditch separated the wood from the overgrown lane. A wood! said Beth in delight. We shall be able to have picnics here. It's a rather a mysterious sort of wood, said Joe thoughtfully. Don't you think so, Beth? Well, the trees are rather thick and they seem about the same as it, but they seem about the same as any others, said Beth. They don't quite, said Franny. The noise the leaves make is different. Listen. They listened and Franny was right. The leaves of the trees in the wind did not rustle in quite the same way as the other trees nearby did. It's almost as if they were really talking to one another, said Beth, whispering secrets, real secrets that we just can't understand. It's a magic wood, said Franny suddenly. Nobody said anything. They stood and listened. Whish, 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 said the trees in the wood and bent towards one another in a friendly way. There might be fairy folk in there, said Beth. Shall we jump over the ditch and go in? No, said Joe. We might get lost. Let's find our way around before we go into the big woods like this. Joe, Joe, Beth, Franny, suddenly came their mother's voice from the cottage not far off. It's time for lunch, time for lunch. The children felt hungry all at once. They forgot the strange wood and ran back to their new home. Mother had new bread with strawberry jam <coughs> for them and they ate the whole loaf between them. Father came in as they were finishing. He had been shopping for Mother in the village three miles away and he was hungry and tired. We've been exploring everywhere, Father, said Beth, pouring him out a big cup of tea. We found a lovely wood, said Joe. The trees really seem to be talking to one another, Father. That must be the wood I've heard about this afternoon, said Father. It has a strange name, children. What's it called? asked Joe. It's called the Enchanted Wood, said their father. But don't go there if you can help it. It's funny to hear things like this nowadays, and I don't expect there is really anything strange about the wood. But just be careful not to go too far in it in case you get lost. The children looked in excitement at one another. The Enchanted Wood. What a lovely name. And each child secretly thought the same thought. I shall go and explore the Enchanted Wood as soon as I, ever I can. Their father set them to work on the overgrown garden once they had finished their meal. Joe had to pull up the tough thistles and the two girls had to weed the untidy vegetable bed. They spoke to one another in joyful voices. The Enchanted Wood! We knew there was something magical about it. I guess there were fairies there, said Franny. We'll do some more exploring as soon as we can cried Beth. We'll find out what those whispering trees are saying. We'll know all the secrets of the wood before many weeks are passed. And that night at bedtime, all three stood at their window, looking out on the dark whispering wood behind the cottage. What would they find in the enchanted wood?